What is to blame? Who is to blame? Why is the Niger Delta region a place where the golden egg is laid, still underdeveloped as we speak? Uh, since the big time discovery of oil, the look happened in 1957, that region remains as something very short of what can really tell. That's where, that's where the, health, the wealth of the entire nation uh, that's other areas that we make money from. But basically, the mainstay of Nigeria's economy, that's where it comes from. We want to take us back to this conversation again, because it seems as if that the voice has been low on it as we go to another dispensation for May 29. And so this morning, to really take a look at how we can chart a new course uh, towards growth and development in the Niger Delta area, joining us this morning, is the president of Morsient, that's Movement for the Survival of Ijo Ethnic Nationality, uh, Kennedy West. Kennedy West, we thank you very much for joining us on News Half today. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much. So before now, we've had a lot of accusations, counter accusations coming from uh, different quarters as to why the Niger Delta region is not as developed as an average person would imagine it to be all through these years. Uh, where are we now as we speak? Thank you very much. Development in the Niger Delta is an holistic thing. It has a government flank to it. It also has the people's flank to it. Government's approach is to create the policy framework and enablement and then employ or draft in people to get things done on behalf of government. And one of such institutions to address the teething problems and developmental needs of the people is NDDC and the Ministry of Niger Delta. They are supposed to work in Paris towards giving the infrastructural needs and then also the socioeconomic environment, you know, that will create business to thrive, investors to come, production of oil to increase, and then development taking its shape. These are the functions of the NDDC and the Ministry of Niger Delta. And I can say to a large extent, that the problem in the Niger Delta is in two ways. Government's lack of political will to push some of these needs to come to fore, and then the people employed into these institutions to also handle their beats. Both parties have not handled it fairly and squarely as it ought to, and that's why we keep having these setback or keep wallowing in Indonesia. Okay, if you, if you can still there. Yes, the people and the government have been called to question on why the Niger Delta region eats the way it is. Uh, uh, sometime in this conversation for development within the Niger Delta, we saw the passage of a 13% a derivative to uh, you know oil producing states. As we speak, the figures in the last two years uh, run to uh, close to 650 billion naira across um, eight states. How do you think these have played out in terms of development? Have you seen anything that these 13 percent have done to the people or to the states uh, in question? The people responsible for the development of the Niger Delta, the federal government, that works through its agency, the NDDC, and its ministry, the Ministry of Niger Delta, and then the funds that are also going to the state, also the government. Now, until the government, the state government and the government at the center come together and clearly spell out functions on where to develop 
and where the federal government should develop, there will not be that seamless development. Because over time, you find out that the same project government, federal government through the NDDC is, you know, about to uh, undertake is what the state too is also undertaking. So you find out that there is kind of conflict between the two institutions, the two tiers of government. But going forward, yes, 13% um, has not been used judiciously. It hasn't been used you know, prudently as it should. And that's because in terms of the NDDC, the, the, the acts that constitute the NDDC also sort of bar stakeholders. Understand that NDDC is a product of the yearnings and aspirations, the clamor and agitations of the people of the Niger Delta. At the point of crafting the NDDC, the people who cried the most, the stakeholders, the people who sacrificed their time, their resources, some of their lives were skewed out of the system. So it became strictly a political affair. Some part of the clause empowered Mr. President to nominate the MD, and then the other clause too empowers the governor. And then where are the people? Where is the community? There is no stakeholders' content in the NDDC formation. And that has grossly denied even development because check and balance is not. Even where you're supposed to bring in. Um, we're supposed to bring in the um, evaluation monitoring committee. Even that one runs into the hands of the politician. So you clearly don't see stakeholders actually holding this ministry or anybody accountable. The best they can do is clamor, like we have always clamored. And then when we do that, you know, they, they, they tag the, the, the stakeholders all sort of name and feel as if or present them as if they are anti the government, you know, and these are not what ought to be. But going forward, we are saying that the NDDC Act should be reviewed in order to bring in stakeholders' content. We thank God for Mr. President, at least from 2021 to 2022, he has been now complying. If not, from 2000. Up until 2021, the federal government had never contributed their quota of the NDDC fund. It is only the oil companies that have been contributing their quota. So you say, where is the political will? That is where government, federal government political will is lost because they have never contributed their quota in spite of what they get. It, 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 so, so at this point in time, they need to review it. They need to review the act, and then they need to now get the stakeholders involved, right. and then they need to make commitment. If the federal government has the political will, there will be no need for a Niger Delta Ministry. There won't be need for a Niger Delta Ministry, because the ministry is not even doing enough. I, I, imagine we're here in 2023, that you just have 10 billion or thereabouts. Okay. Mr. West, it's at, like at you actually ministry. Even... What is it supposed to do? Okay, please go on. I thought you, you already uh, stopped on that. Are you, have you made your point? You're good with that? Okay, I can continue. We have, we have been pushing. Okay. Let me that bring you the next question. The ministry cases. is not doing enough. Okay. First, they are underfunded. They are grossly underfunded. And then two... You don't, you can't be able to put them, juxtapose them with the NDDC. You always claim that, okay, a bigger chunk of the money has gone to NDDC, so therefore you don't need to fund them. If you don't fund them, then don't use them as camouflage. Let us know that it's one institution that we have, other than keeping them and then underfunding them. Mr. West, you, are in the course of answering that question, also brought about. Uh, a question within, uh, maybe a, 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 an answer within a question that you were answering. 
uh, one would ask that what else can the federal government do uh, in the face of the fact that we're running a federal system as we speak, we're restructuring, and if it ever comes, then one can start to take it up from there. But as the nation is run at this point in time, the federal government brought about the NDDC. It's also brought about OMPADEC. Uh, these two are, we here, mostly headed by people of Niger Delta origin. And that's one part. The acts that you have issues with, the NDDC Act, what parts of those acts are you talking about? That's the A part of the question. The B part of the question is in the present situation as it is under the law. In other ways, do you think the federal government can show more commitment to the Niger Delta region? Thank you. When it comes to the acts that established the NDDC, the, the NDDC, the fact that there is no stakeholders content is where we tend to have problems with because we feel that the check and balance is not adequate enough and that's why there are loopholes here and there. Government, in our wisdom, initiated the forensic. And then, as communities in the Niger Delta, Mosiend is a community base. We immediately had a stakeholders meeting and then directed that every community, the CDC chairman, the chief of that community, and the community uh, uh, groups should wait for the members or the staff of the forensic audit companies that have been awarded that company to go on inspection together. Together. Because first you'll be looking at is the, is the project cited in my community? Secondly, what is the quality of the project in that community? Thirdly, does that project is it also what is on NDDC uh, 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 project manual? Now, you need to look all of that up and know how much has been invested and what do we have now? Where do we need to go from here? Is it that the foundation of the project had not started or the foundation has started but it was haphazardly done or it is completed or it is haphazardly? That you need to look at all of these before government would need to. But interestingly, 80% of the communities did not see the presence of the forensic auditors. Now, if you have a stakeholder content in that in the NDDC, these stakeholders will ensure that they also match out with the forensic auditors to get on the spot assessment for themselves. But unfortunately, that was not the case. We only woke up one morning after a very long period expecting them that a paper has been submitted. And most of the communities have issues with, those, uh, with the report because the forensic auditors did not visit their community. So we are saying that in going forward, yes, um, sometime the Senator uh, Peter Waboshe-led uh, committee also tried to review the NDDC uh, the Act. But that was only on the financial aspect of it. They didn't take a look at participation, inclusive participation, where the people of the communities, where the people of the Niger Delta stakeholders also will be injected into the system, to be nominated into the system. And then if you also look at the uh, project monitoring and evaluation too, you also find out that that clause is also given to the bourgeois, the same government, they nominate who should be the project uh, monitor, uh, monitoring and team, the project evaluation team. You cannot be a justice in your own case. No, you cannot. So we feel that the communities, the stakeholders should also have a role to play and also backed, up, backed by the law in that uh, program. Then, government's will towards... Uh, 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 seeing that NDDC, you know, play a role and then there is development. Let us also say that um, the PIB, you know, we don't clearly understand what the PIB is. 
Why? The PIB came up and people jubilated as because that the community content will be looked critically into and be given a place. But I can tell you that every other clause, changing NNPC to NNPCL and very other, other clauses are all taking shape outside of the community content. So where are we? Where are we exactly? Because the, 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 PI, the PIA right now, we're not seeing anything out of it. Nothing. It's still on paper. There's no constructive engagement, not with Niger Delta Ministry, nor with the NDDC. It's just on paper. So the people of the region are a bit lost from this because for, for us, it appears that, you know, we're being taken for granted. The, 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 the and then let us know where we are. Other functions are working very well, but the, the community content that will bring soccer to the, to the community, to the stakeholders, and ma make this whole thing look inclusive is totally absent, and nothing is happening. So these are some of the things that gives us worry, outside of the fact that uh, three months after the uh, inauguration of the NDDC board, which we clamored for so seriously, you know, um, 2021, 2022 budget, is still hanging in the National Assembly, not approved. Uh, the uh, 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 funds, the, the remittance from that was got uh, uh, received by EFCC is still lying down there. And then we don't even understand what the PIA is doing. And then the gas gas flaring compensation for the communities, you know, host communities, is still hanging. So totally. We're a bit confused with the government. But I can say that there is, there is this feeling, you know, that we have somehow that Mr. President have sincere intention for the people of the region. But somehow our worry tends to lies with the people at the corridors of power. Are they misinforming him or I, 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 we just don't understand. These are the things we want clarity from, from the EFCC, from the National Assembly, that we want these funds all paid because there's a huge consultation going on since this um, this um, board was inaugurated you know you keep having consultation tiers after tiers and the people are highly expected yeah, thinking totally. that the moment we finish these consultations this engage engagement that you begin to see things going on mobilizing yeah. people to side yeah. we have uh, uh, what they call it uh, 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 the issue, about, the issue about flood coming in. And you know that the people of the Niger Delta suffered grossly. And then we hear that 2023 flood will be heavier than 2022. So what is the preparation? Monies need to be put on ground for these things to work. Mm, yeah. So why are they holding the money aspect of it just like they're also holding the community content of the PIA? These are the things that government should clarify. Yeah, Kennedy, it, it's important because these are the issues we are also interrogating uh, this morning, the issues as it affects the, the, the region. Uh, so I'm also hoping that um, uh, with these conversations, stakeholders within the region will begin to spearhead conversations and begin to ask the right questions to the right quarters uh, to ensure that uh, we get answers to all of these concerns. Uh, let, let me move you forward a little bit, um, Kennedy. 2016, we saw uh, it was like a fanfare, a fanfare when um, this government decided on the cleaning up of Ogoni. Uh, it's how many years from now, from there it's up until now. What do you see? Uh, well, what we get is that uh, there's been some pretty, pretty, pretty slow uh, movement of activities as regards the clean up of Ogoni region. What do you see going down, Kennedy? The Ogoni, the, the Ogoni issue is something that needs more attention and more support. The government has come up with, you know, their blueprint. Yes, Ogoni must be cleaned. The international donors are also putting in their money. What I think is that there should be a close rank or a closer rank between the communities and IPREP and the Ministry of Environment. There should be 
community content. Yes, the people are community people, but from the feelers we get, the people at the community seem not to be satisfied with the level of work going on if you juxtapose it with the amount that has entered into the coffers of um, IPREB and then the, um, the, the ministry. So they, sh they should rise up to the occasion and do something meaningful. You know, if you're able to put one billion, you should be able to see some milestone, you know, before you put in another two billion again. And then, then is the one billion commensurate with the work done? Because whether we like it or not, that is a test case for us. It is, it goes to show whether truly this environmental cleanup team is going to work or is working. A lot of communities that have, within the Niger Delta, that have the same problem, are all using the Ogoni cleanup as a test case. They, they, they use it as a test case. They want to see if truly this cleanup is working or not. All right, so Kennedy, there should maybe, be some maybe level I should of come sincerity. in there. There should be level of transparency. There should be level of collaboration closer. There should be people that should be there giving situation rep blow by blow. And the federal government should also have people there. And then, Kennedy. MOSOP should also have that. The Ogoni Youth Federation should also. So let's have these communities boxed up into one team that will be checking. You need checking. You need the people to know what is happening. Kennedy Not West, if, if you can hear me. This is in line with your line of thoughts, and you took it just right from my mouth. If you're calling on the people to harmonize efforts towards even making the test run of the cleanup of the region, which should have begun with the Ogoni area, so to speak, to succeed. Frankly speaking, would you say it is more of the uh, lack of willpower, perhaps, uh, Maybe you don't even trust the, the, the intentions of the federal government or the people themselves not really prioritizing what should be done with the resources put in place and the plans that come along with the resources to make the region a better place, frankly speaking. Are you there, Kennedy? Did, did you get my question? Really? Uh, I'm not sure that uh, Kennedy is able no. to get my question. Let's fix that because that question needs an answer for another person watching us. People watch this program from all over the world and they would take a lot away from what you, uh, who uh, you're part of those who are really moving for the, uh, for the better Niger Delta region would have to say. So if you can hear me now, can I see you? Just let me see if you, can, if you can hear me. Can you hear me now, Kennedy? I can hear you. You can go on. Okay, all right. So the Clearly. question is, frankly speaking, is this about the plans to make Niger Delta a better place, be it in terms of improving the environment or giving the desired attention to its growth and development on the part of governments across the board? Let's say the federal government, maybe state governments are highly ever put on the, on the spot in my own words now, or the people themselves who are mainly from the Niger Delta region and the willpower to do what has been earmarked, what's been uh, kind of planned to make the region a better place for everyone. Can we hear your candid opinion or views, so to speak? Um, you see, we have... As Mosien, there's a body um, who came in on the 20th of um, 20th of um, uh, 19th of um, uh, 2020, 2020, and we try to analyze why we are still the way we are several years after, in spite of what government is doing, and um, we came up with a three arrow reorientation, repositioning and recovery of lost values. Yes, government has their own side of the, 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 the challenges, which is a um, lack of willpower. 
The people, too, also have their own challenges, which is either um, lack of sincerity, because in building the region, you don't you bring an outsider to come and build your community for you. From the inception of NDDC, you have not had somebody from the north as the MD or chairman of NDDC. No. Th these people come from the community. These people come from the Niger Delta. How have they been able to? What do they see? And that's why people like us are saying that no matter what you do, do not try to push away these stakeholders, these people on the struggle platform. And for the reason we commend Mr. President for giving us our own uh, Chief Dr. Samuel Ogboku, who is, also, who is also part of the struggle. And we also commend um, the, the, uh, the Minister of Niger Delta for ensuring that the peoples will come in. But beyond that, the people must take responsibility sincerely, transparently, because Mr. President will always bring in somebody from the region. How do you see your people? The moment they invite you or they appoint you, do you see yourself as federal government and then see the people as strangers? The funds that are kept in your custody, do you use it judiciously, sincerely, sincerely, transparently for the overall benefit and betterment of your people or you see it as a political patronage? We have been having this very wrong orientation that people being appointed into corridors of power sees it as political patronage. And this political aspect of it, we should try and limit it. Even mm. if we can. Mm. Yeah, Kennedy, Kennedy White, thank you so very much. You have, you have the, nailed the man, all the concerns around the Niger Delta region. Uh, I mean, my takeaway right now is the fact that uh, the people are uh, part of the problem themselves. Uh, the people of the region are part of the problem themselves. They must be intentional. They must be deliberate in wanting to change the narratives uh, within the region. Thank you so very much for talking to us, Kennedy White, who is the president of Morsian Movement for the Survival of Ito Ethnic Nationality. Thank you so very much, Kennedy. Thank you very much.